When I consult a server using my smartphone or a website, for example, what do the packets that arrive at my terminal pass through? That is the question that we will answer in this video. Hello tech lovers, welcome to the third lesson of the course Architecture and General Principles of 4G Networks. If you have not seen the previous lessons, we have a link down below where you can click here in this card. But first, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, activate the bell to be notified of a new video, like, share and leave your comments below. The internet network itself cannot manage mobility. Each packet is intended for an address and an address is generally linked to a physical location. The solution adopted for 4G networks was the coverage packet designed for a mobile subscribers to a single network gateway called the PGW or packet gateway. That means that when I consult a server, the packet consulting, for example, a piece of a website will be transmitted through the internet to my mobile operator's P gateway. Then from the P gateway to the base station using the mobile operator's own IP network, as demonstrated here and from the base station to my terminal over the radio channel. So the function of the P gateway is to route data to the terminal and also take to the care of a certain number of security functions. It is a gateway and it must be protected against attacks from outside. And in the opposite direction, when I send a request, from my cell phone or smartphone. It's the same thing from the terminal to the E node B, from the E node B to the P gateway, and from the P gateway to the server, as demonstrated in this game. If we have a network with a very large number of subscribers, like in China or India, there can be several P gateways because one P gateway does not have enough capacity to manage all the packets. Several P gateways can also be necessary to have redundancy and ensure reliability. However, P gateways are a limited in number. But if we think for a second, the typical number of init bees for an English network is around 12,000. In certain cases, in dense areas, the coverage of an init B is just several hundred meters around the init B. On the other hand, there are just few P gateways in 4G network. If we consider the transfer to a terminal, when this terminal is moving, we can see we'll have to notify the P gateway and route data, not to the former inode B, where the subscriber was before, but to the new inode B. This routing requires the exchange of signaling messages to avoid frequent routing at the level of the P gateway. We will introduce intermediary equipment called the Serving Gateway or S Gateway. The Serving Gateway serves a given geographic zone, typically one English region, for example. Now, we have an additional hoop from the server to the P Gateway, from the P Gateway to the S Gateway, and from the S Gateway to the E node B. That seems slightly more complex, but the advantage is that when the terminal moves, very often it remains under the same S gateway. And that is only the S gateway that has to manage this mobility. 
this version. So NS Gateway enables not only the collection of data sent by the mobile terminals to various inodbs, but also the distribution of data coming from several from several to the inodbs where the terminal is, which is what we represented here. The serving gateway and the packet gateway are two very important elements of the core of the 4G network. Something to note is that the packet that make up the data stream, for example, the video stream I look at, I look at on my smartphone is through the P gateway. It's the entrance and the serving gateway which is linked to the place the region where I'm located. Hello tech lovers, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and share the video. I'm launching one lesson per week, so it's important that you subscribe and activate the bell to be notified when I upload a new video. Stay home, wash your hands and take care.